You're watching Tornado Facts with Beanrock124, the first one of 2023. This is Season 2, Episode 15, or Episode 35 of Tornado Facts with Beanrock124. My name is Nathan, and I have not talked about tornadoes all the time. Well, recently at least. Except, uh, it's probably in my best interest to talk about them soon. We could have our first special Tornado Facts with Beanrock124 video for 2023, two days into the year. Look at this, 30% chance of severe weather in the same area that has just been affected, November 29th, November 4th, December 12th through 15th. That same area. I'm recording this Saturday, uh, no, Friday night. Uh, so this is still day four. Cities, yeah. So when you see this, it'll be tomorrow when you see this video. So... Today's tornado outbreak I'm talking about is the tornado outbreak of June 2nd, 1998. It was one of the most significant tornado outbreaks in recent history to, e to hit, bleh, hit the East Central United States. The severe weather event spawned a total of 33 tornadoes in nine states from New York to South Carolina and caused an estimated $40 million in damage, 80 injuries, and two fatalities. For Pennsylvania in particular, it was the second historic and deadly severe weather event in three days. <laughs> Sounds similar to December of 2021. Uh, this immediately followed the late May 1998 tornado outbreak of derecho event on May 30th through 31st, 1998, the, the event that caused the only high-risk area to ever be issued in this part of the United States, where 41 tornadoes uh, over New York, um, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Vermont respond, causing an estimated $83 million in damage and 109 fatalities and one fatality. 109 injuries and one fatality, my bad. Uh, this video was la there, this outbreak was last video, if you want to go watch that. Um, I talk in depth about it a little bit, but it ain't the greatest video I made. But anyways, on June 2nd, the Storm Prediction Center outlined a moderate risk of severe weather across a large portion of the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast United States regions, uh, allowing a series of shortwave troughs to undercut the vortex across the northern half of the country. Strong southerly outflow ahead of a fast-moving cold front contributed to robust moisture return with dew points in excess of 50 degrees Fahrenheit in central New York, in excess of 60 degrees Fahrenheit across the Washington, D.C. area, and in excess of 70 degrees Fahrenheit in the Ohio River Valley. These are dew points, by the way. I've never heard of 70 dew points. Uh, combined with a very unstable atmosphere exhibited um, by Cape values above 3,000 joules per kilogram, uh, forecasters remarked on the uh, uh, potential... on the potentially... Forecasters remarked on the potentially for a classic northwest flow event. That doesn't that make sense. Uh, in the afternoon hours, a main shortwave trough accompanied by 500 millibar winds up to 80 knots or 90 miles an hour pushed toward Lake Michigan. Huh. Lake Michigan. I wonder where that is. Uh, this feature enhanced a low-level conver low level convergence zone and surface barometric pressures fall. Surface barometric pressure falls associated with Lee trough. Lee trough is... Trough is okay. It's just talking about normal trough east of the Appalachian Mountains and general, generally contributed to widespread favorable wind profiles for, conducive for supercells. Given forecast storm relative helicity values of 300, 6, 300 to 600 meters squared per second squared, I think we're going to keep that rolling because I have no idea what that means still. Uh, the possibility of isolated significant F2 or stronger tornadoes on the Fujita scale tornadoes were possible. Uh, storms first developed across portions of Ontario southward into Ohio, and scattered supercells evolved across southern New York, Pennsylvania, the Delmarva region, I've never heard of that, and North Carolina over subsequent hours as the cold front continued eastward. This activity ultimately weakened as it encountered a loss of daylight heating and moisture closer to the coastline with the Atlantic Ocean. So, here's your confirmed tornadoes, none unrated. 12F0, 15F1, 4F2, 1F3, 1F4, fortunately no F5s for a total of 33 tornadoes, and here are your tornadoes. Uh-huh, here. Like I said, 1F4, we'll get to that in a second. Mile wide, I'm going to try and find this picture eventually. There has to be one somewhere. Uh, I think I have an idea of what tornadoes could be. Uh, Frostburg tornado. The most significant tornado of the outbreak was this violent F4 tornado that tracked over... Um, Pennsylvania, Maryland during the evening hours of June 2nd. So maybe there will not be a picture. Yep, there's definitely not a picture of it. Okay, unless we get a good lightning strike of one. Uh, the parent supercell responsible for the tornado persisted for over 200 miles. Sounds similar to something. Uh, the first, the tornado first touched down at 9 p.m. Eastern Time in extreme eastern Fayette County, Pennsylvania, where it sheared 
where it only sheared or uprooted trees. Uh, the tornado crossed into Somerset County, where it rapidly grew to a maximum width of a mile wide and intensified to F3 strength. Uh, through the tornado, though the tornado moved generally across rural areas, it still encountered many farms, which were completely demolished. A manufactured home was blown off its foundation. In conjunction with other tornadoes in the county that afternoon, about 30 to 40 properties suffered some form of damage. Over 100 heads of cattle were killed in one uh, destroyed barn alone. Jeez. Uh, many other farms suffered the loss of dozens of livestock, too. Um, the tornado crossed into Garrett County, Maryland, now at F2 strength. It destroyed several buildings as it moved through the town of Finzel, uh, including a small house and a cinder block garage. That tells you the tornado was pretty strong there. Uh, as the tornado crossed into Allegheny, Allegheny County, I think that's how you pronounce it, Allegheny, uh, it acquired um, multi-vortex character, characteristics and reached F4 intensity with violent winds up to 210 miles an hour, the highest recorded ever in Maryland. Uh, descended Big Savage Mountain. Uh, if it was savage enough, it would have uh, killed off the tornado. Uh, this enter, uh, then the tornado entered Frostburg. In this area, at least eight homes were destroyed. Wow, I went so long without laughing. Uh, in this area, at least eight homes were destroyed, including a two-story house that was obliterated. That could have been easily F5 uh, intensity there. Dozens of other houses were damaged. An equal number of cars were damaged. An equal number of cars. I, I was going to come up with a joke for there. Some of which were totaled. Okay. Uh, structures in this area were particularly uh, susceptible to the tornado, as Frostburg resides on the Allegheny Alleg Alleg Plateau at an elevation of 2,000 feet. I know everybody's going to say, you pronounced it wrong! I don't care what I did, it's how I pronounce it, deal with it. Anyways, I'm only kidding. So this Allegheny Plateau uh, was about 2,000 feet and thus faced full exposure to tornadic winds. Additional damage uh, was incurred to structures in Eckhart Mines and Clarysville. Man, people come up with better names. Um, the, this, it struck these areas before the tornado crossed Dan's Mountain. Uh, continued north toward, oh great, not another one, Cresap Town before lifting. I know that I pronounced that wrong. In total, the tornado was on the ground for 36.8 miles and 50 minutes. Approximately 29 homes were destroyed, another 125 were damaged along the tornado's path, and about half the homes remaining nevertheless suffered moderate to major damage. Thousands of trees were snapped or uprooted. Debris from the Frostburg area uh, was carried upwards of 100 miles downstream towards Sterling, Virginia. Uh, initial, initial monetary cost from the tornado ranged from four to five, four and a half to $5 million dollars. In 1998 dollars five people were injured um, it was it is one of only three violent f4 tornadoes in Maryland with the other two occurring in 1926 and this one the La Plata tornado the one that crossed Chesapeake Bay in 2002 I can't think of the date right now I think it's April 27 2002 uh, this is the Lake Cary f3 tornado this is the only f3 tornado of this day yep uh, yes okay a tornado first uh, began over the southeastern portions of Bradford County, Pennsylvania, and Terry Township. It displaced a manufactured home off its uh, foundation by about eight feet, and inflicted damage uh, to its front side. An adjacent farm vehicle, pickup truck, and storage shed sh um, stopped the structure from rolling down a steep nearby hill. Um, a storage building was severely damaged near this location, with its roof, roof completely ripped off, and some of its metal barns removed from the siding. The tornadic funnel uh, ascended to the top of the tree level, to the tree top level for a time, but then descended once more as it flattened a large barn. Roofing material from the barn was thrown up to 300 yards downstream. A newly built home with um, a larger rear deck suffered only minor damage in this vicinity. The tornado then continued to Wyoming County and affected structures along a small hill, causing minor damage to their siding and roofs. As the tornado crossed Lake Cary. Uh, and impacted several surrounding structures that reached F3 intensity. Every structure along a narrow strip of land across Lake Cary was either severely damaged or completely flanned. At one house, this is going to be a sad story, an, elder, an elderly um, elderly woman and her grandson were sucked out of their second story home, resulting in their deaths. Those were the only two deaths from this tornado, unfortunately. Uh, the tornado continued up another hill east of the lake. I don't think it needs that detail, because look at the part of the country we're in. Uh, and continued to inflict damage to homes. One of the houses was reduced to its bare foundation. 
and portion of its back what and a portion of its back wall okay well, okay there's no period here in total 42 homes around this area were either significantly damaged or demolished over a dozen small and anchored boats were tossed out of the water and onto the shoreline that's why people you move them it's like her it's like people leaving their boats in florida at the docks when a hurricane comes it's the same story people now instead of arguing about people living in mobile homes, I should argue about people not putting their boats properly away. It's common sense, something I kind of don't have. Um, the tornado continued into East Lemon County, heavily damaged three houses. One of the houses had its roof ripped off and its garage destroyed, while a second had its back deck um, destroyed and all of its back windows blown out. Now, when an injury occurred in this township, uh, the tornado moved into Lackawanna County. Yeah, Lackawanna. Never mind. Where it struck the campus of the Keystone Junior College, blowing out the windows and twisting gutters. Speaking of twisting, twisters. Yeah, yeah, I said the plural. July 19, 2024. I will be watching it. I'll probably make a tornado facts being our quick video about that. But it's going to be different. Who knows? But anyways, after 35 miles, that, that's still pretty far out, so who knows. After 35 miles, the tornado finally lifted at North Abington Township. So, that is it for this first Tornado Facts with Pinoc 1 2 War video of 2023. It's weird to say 2023, because it feels like just a week ago I started saying 2022. Uh, 2022 has been a quick year in comparison to the past two years. I don't know if that has to do with me being in high school now or what, but... I can't believe it's already 2023, and I think I have about 50 Tornado Facts for being our 24 videos planned for this year. So let's see if I can get through all of it without dying. Either way, this has been Season 2, Episode 15 of Tornado Facts for being our 24. This one about the tornado outbreak of June 2nd, 1998. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later. Goodbye.